In this last video on complex numbers, we're looking at some of the theorem proofs that we referred to earlier. So part seven is some of the selected theorem proofs. So let's get started with the first one that says the complex set of complex numbers is closed under addition. All right, and we'll come back to some of these properties of real numbers because we will need to use them. So we assume we know them. We assume they're proved. The real number properties we're happy with. Now we want to prove the number properties for complex numbers. So the first thing I want to look at is that C is closed under addition. Now what does that mean? That means if I've got two elements of C, I want to show that if I add them, that is also a complex number. That is, means it's closed under addition. So if I take two complex numbers, I add them, I get a, again get a complex number. Now there's a bit of in-between we're going for, so let's see. If I take two complex numbers, what would they look like? Well, Z can be A plus IB. W can be X plus IY. You can use any letters there. Or you can use A1, A2, B1, B2, whatever you prefer. they just placeholders. So A and B... X and Y, we know are all real numbers. And that's important to state that because we're going to use properties of real numbers. They're going to help us. So we have to know we're working with numbers that are real. All right. So let's look at what Z plus W looks like. Z plus W is then A plus IB plus X plus IY. And that's defined as A plus X plus I times B plus Y. That is the definition of addition in the complex numbers. That's how we defined addition in the complex numbers. So we're happy to say that. Now, we want to get to the point where this is also a complex number. Now you can look at it and go, well, it looks like a complex number. A complex number has a, a real portion and an imaginary portion. Well, what do I know about those portions? The real part must be a real number and the imaginary part that a and that b both those parts must be real numbers so can i say x plus a plus x is a real number because if i can say a plus x is a real number and b plus y is a real number then i'm done because then this looks like a complex number is defined so that addition is in the complex numbers. so let's go back to here is A plus X and B plus Y, are they real numbers? Yes, because addition is closed in the real numbers. So I'm using the property that if I add two real numbers, I get a real number back. And that is how we get to the fact that the complex numbers are closed under addition. So then my conclusion is my sum is a complex number. So therefore... The whole set is closed under addition. Now notice I didn't use a specific example and just say 2 plus 4i and 5 minus 2i. If I add them, I get a complex number because that's not enough. We need to show that the whole set is closed under addition. So any, if I grab any two elements of that set and I add them, it must be back in that set. So an example is not a proof, but this, what we do is we just pick two general elements that could represent any elements in that set. All right. So for addition, let's look at the commutativity. So we're going to prove that addition in C is commutative. How do we prove that? Well, we need two elements of C. So let Z and W be elements of C. Z is equal to A plus IB, W is equal to X plus IY, and I've got A, B, X, and Y are all real numbers. All right, so I've got a bunch of real numbers. This is my two numbers, so what do I want to show? I want to look at Z plus W. And to show that addition in C is commutative, I need to show that Z plus W is going to be equal to W plus Z, because then I've shown addition is commutative. So what process do we follow to get there? Well, Z plus W will be A plus IB plus X plus IY. Add the two numbers. That's A plus X plus I times B plus Y. 
that is from the definition of addition in complex numbers. All right. Now, what would W plus X look like? W plus X would just be X plus A plus I times Y times B. Now, can I say this is equal to X plus A plus I times Y plus B? Am I allowed to say that? Am I allowed to swap these two around? And the answer is yes. Why? Because in real numbers, these two are just two real numbers. And I know addition in R is commutative. So I use the property that addition of real numbers is commutative because I know those are all real numbers, so it was important to state that. So addition in R is commutative, and that is why I can use that property, and then we're done. So that is just what W plus Z will look like, so I can conclude that addition in C is commutative. And so we use our properties of real numbers to help us prove the properties in complex numbers. Let's just look at the additive identity. So we said that there's an additive identity in complex numbers. Zero is the additive identity. That's what we've said, where zero is just zero plus zero i. So let us see if zero is actually the additive identity. It will be the additive identity if any number z plus zero gives me z again for any number z. Okay, so we're going to start by saying let z be any complex number where z is equal to a plus ib and I know a and b are real numbers. So if I look at z plus zero, that would be a plus ib plus zero plus zero i or i zero. So that is a plus zero plus i times b plus zero. All right, now this is very obvious, but why can I say that a plus zero is just a and that b plus zero is just b? Because I know zero is the additive identity in the real numbers because these are just real numbers. All right, so that's how we've shown that that is zero is the additive identity in the complex numbers as well. All right, so if we look at multiplication, it's the same process to prove these. We just look at what it would look like, use the properties in R, and we will have it. All right, so we're only going to look at one of these. Let's look at the commutative property again. All right, and we're going to use the commutative property in real numbers to help us to prove that one. So if I want to show that multiplication in C is commutative, I just choose two numbers, let's Z and W, B and C. Z is equal to A plus IB. W is equal to X plus IY. And I've got A, B, X and Y are all real numbers. Right, so if I look at Z times W, Z times W is then A plus IB times X plus IY. And that we know is AX minus BY, and you can write it out to get to that plus i times a y plus bx. All right, so there's the product. So I want to show that that is equal to w times z. But what would w times z look like? w times z would be x plus i y times a plus i b. And here's our missing step. We'll need a reason here. Firstly, the reason over here, because that is the definition of multiplication in C. All right. What would W times Z look like? If we work backwards, I would be having XA minus 
y b plus i times y a plus x b. So what happened here? Are these two equal? We haven't shown it yet. We still have to get there. We've worked from the top and from the bottom. These two are only equal if what's inside there is equal. Now, if you look at what happened there, this is just commutativity in R. So yes, that is equal. I can connect the dots and that my reason, and the reasons are always important, since multiplication in R is commutative. So that is why that is true. All right, if we look at the complex conjugates, let's look at this property over here. Seeing that we already looked at an example like that, let's see if it actually does work in general. So we say, let Z and W be complex numbers. Z is A plus IB, W is X plus IY, where A, B, X and Y are all real numbers. So Z's complex conjugate is going to be A minus IB. W's complex conjugate is X minus IY. Z times W is going to be AX minus BY plus I times AY plus BX. All right. Now, what would... What we're trying to prove, let's just put it there, is that Z times W's complex conjugate is equal to Z's complex conjugate times W's complex conjugate. So that's what we're going for. All right. So let's look at ZW's complex conjugate. We know that's going to be AX minus BY. And then this changes. Minus I times AY plus BX. Let's leave that for now. Let's look at Z's complex conjugate times W's complex conjugate. A minus BI times X minus IY. Now we must pay attention when we're multiply, multiplying. We've got AX, and my second part is minus BY, because I've got minus BI times minus YI, so it's plus BYI squared, so it becomes minus BI, plus I times. Now I've got minus AY and minus BX. But is that not just the same as what we have in the previous, time, previous line? Yes. So that's the same as AX minus BY. And I can bring the minus out. And I've got AY plus BX. All right. Or you can multiply the minus in in the previous one. But what we've proved is that those two are the same. So those are complex conjugates are the same. Right, there's a lot more theorems that can be proven. I don't have time in this video to prove all of them. But let me know if you need me to prove some more of them.